Let's say, Lucetta, now we are alone. Wouldst thou then counsel me to fall in love? I'm madam, so you stumble not heedfully. Of all the fair resort of gentlemen that every day with parley encounter me, in thy opinion, which is worthiest love? Well, please you repeat the names. I'll show you mind according to my shallow, simple skill. What thinkst thou of the fair Sir Eglamour? As of a knight, well-spoken, neat and fine, but were I you, he never should be mine. Hmm, what thinkst thou of the rich Mercatio? Well, of his wealth, but of himself, so-so. What thinkst thou of the gentle Proteus? Lord, <laughs> Lord, to see what folly reigns in us. How now, what means this passion at his name? Pardon, dear madam, tis a passing shame that I, unworthy body as I am, should censure thus of lonely gentlemen. Why not on Proteus as of all the rest? Then thus of many good I think him best. Your reason? I have no other, but a woman's reason. I think him so because I think him so. And wouldst thou have me cast my love on him? Aye, if you, if you thought your love not cast away. Why, he of all the rest hath never moved me. Yet he of all the rest I think best loves ye. His little speaking shows his love but small. The fire that's closest kept burns most of all. Mm, they do not love that do not show their love. Oh, they love least that let men know their love. I would I knew his mind. Peruse this paper, madam. To Julia, say from whom? That the contents will show. Say, say, who gave it thee? Valentine's page and sent, I think, from Proteus. He would have given it to you, but I, being in the way, did in your name receive it. Pardon the fault, I pray. Now, by my god, now by my modesty, a goodly <laughs> broker, dare you presume to harbor wanton lines, to whisper and conspire against my youth? Now, trust me, tis an office of great worth, and you, an officer fit for the place, or else return no more into my sight. To plead for love deserves more fee than hate. Will ye be gone? That you may ruminate. Exit. And yet I would have over overlooked the letter for her shame to call her back again and pray her to a fault for which I chid her. What a fool is she that knows I am a maid and would not force the letter to my view since maids in modesty say no to that which they would have the proffer construe. I fie, fie, how wayward is this foolish love that like a testy babe will scratch the nurse and presently all humbled kiss the rod. How churlishly I chid Lucetta hence, when willingly I would have had her here. How angrily I taught my brow to frown, when inward joy enforced my heart to smile. My penance is to call Lucetta back and ask remission for my folly past. What ho, Lucetta? We entered Lucetta. What would your ladyship? Is near dinner time? I would it were that you might kill your stomach on your meat and not upon your maid. <laughs> What is that you took up so gingerly? Nothing. Why didst thou stoop then? To take a paper up that I let fall. And is that paper nothing? Nothing concerning me. Then let it lie for those that it concerns. Madam, it will not lie where it concerns unless it have a false interpreter. Some love of yours hath writ to you in rhyme? That I might sing it, madam, to a tune. Give me a note, your ladyship can set. As little by such toys as may be possible. Best sing it to the tune of Light, O Love. It is too heavy for so light a tune. Heavy? You like it hath some burden then? Aye, and malicious were it. Would you sing it? And why not you? I cannot reach so high. Let's see your song. How now, minion? Keep tune till, uh, keep tune there still. So you will sing it out. And yet, methinks, I do not like this tune. You do not? No, madam, it is too sharp. You, minion, are too saucy. Nay, now you are too flat, and mar the concord with too harsh a descant. There wanteth but a mean to fill your song. The mean is drowned with your unruly bass. Indeed, 
I bid the base for Proteus. This bubble shall not henceforth trouble me. Here's a coil with protestation. There's the letter. Go, get you gone and let the papers lie. You should be fingering them to anger me. She makes it strange, but she would be best pleased to be so angered with another letter. Exit. Nay, would I were so angered with the same, oh, hateful hands to tear such loving words, injurious wasps to feed on such sweet honey and kill the bees that yield it with your stings. I'll kiss each several paper for amends. Look, here is writ. Kind Julia, unkind Julia is in revenge of thy ingratitude. I throw thy name against the bruising stones, trampling contemptuously on thy disdain. And here is writ. Oh no, I lost my page. Sorry. Uh, I throw my name against the bruising stones, trampling contemptuously on thy disdain. And here is writ love wounded Proteus, poor wounded name, my bosom as a bed shall lodge thee thy till thy wound be thoroughly healed, and thus I search it with a sovereign kiss. But twice, or thrice, was Proteus written down. Be calm, good wind, blow not a word away till I have found each letter in the letter, except mine own name, that some whirlwind bear unto a ragged, fearful hanging rock, and throw it thence into the raging sea. Lo, here in one line is his name twice writ. Poor, forlorn Proteus, passionate Proteus to the sweet Julia, that I'll tear away, and yet I will not. Seth so prettily he couples it to his complaining names. Thus I will fold them one on another. Now kiss, embrace, contend, do what you will. Re-enter Lucetta. Madam, dinner is ready and your father stays. Well, let us go. What, shall these papers lie like telltales here? If you respect them, best to take them up. Nay, I was taken up for laying them down. Yet here they shall not lie for catching cold. I see you have a month's mind to them. Hi, madam. You may say what size is sights you see. I see things too. Although you judge, uh, although you judge, I wink. Come, come, will please you go? Exit. 